Uh, let me firstly recognize all the uh, members of the private sector organization of Jamaica uh, who are here this morning. Let me recognize the visitors and members from the University of the West Indies. But I would also like to recognize um, in person a few uh, individuals here this morning. Uh, let me recognize firstly the president of the private sector organization of Jamaica, Mr. Paul Scott. Thank you very much, sir, for hosting us. Uh, let me also recognize our guest speaker for this morning, uh, Professor Sir Hilary Beckles, who really needs no introduction. And I could say, Sir Hilary, and everybody just say, let us listen. But I will do some injustice if I do that. So we'll introduce him later on. Uh, let me also recognize our sponsors, NCB and uh, FLU. They have been consistent sponsors of the President's Forum, and we want to thank them. I think you should give them a round of applause, actually. Uh, I've been asked to speak to you today about retail analytics, and I think it's timely because a quick poll, and this is what retail analytics is really about, right? A quick poll, by way of a good morning, how many of you have started Christmas shopping already? <laughs> oh, a lot of you, right? <laughs> so if we all remember our times with fashion nights out last Christmas, walking the malls, right? Even if you've done your shopping before, you always walk the malls. Be it here at home or abroad, we're always walking, trying to figure out what's that last minute gift, or how do I make that last gift even better? Retail analytics actually helps retailers to guide us down that path. And Cable and Wireless, we're looking towards doing that within Jamaica as well. In fact, we've launched it across the region. And we've done it in a way that says, hey, if we provide public Wi-Fi, for example, if we're doing, in Halfway Tree, in Constant Spring, in the mall, when you hit the mall, and you meet that first vendor to your left, and retail analytics says, hey, pop up, jump onto my Wi-Fi, and you log on. We can then take some information about you. That vendor can say, who are you? What's your age group? What are you looking for? Anything they so desire. So by the time you're halfway down the, down the strip, there's someone else saying, I know exactly what you're looking for because the first vendor didn't have it. But well, we're all working together to get this information in. And that's what the polling is in retail analytics. That's what it's all about. It's when you go to no, Miami International Airport, when you log on to their Wi-Fi, and they ask you to, sorry, they ask you to capture your name, your email address, and you go, oh, it's, it's nothing. It really is for your benefit. When you walk past the virtual assistant, she's actually capturing things about you and what you're looking for. And that's what we need here. We need to start guiding our retailers on what our market needs, right? What our consumers are looking to do so that when they're shopping in October, in September, to get the goods to us, they're buying the right things. So when you walk into the stores, you're not guessing, what do I need? Why is it not here? Who actually understands the quality of the goods and services that I require? According to PC Forbes, founder of Forbes magazine, Christmas is a tonic for our soul. It moves us to think of others rather than ourselves and it directs our thoughts to giving. Indeed, at National Commercial Bank, we are feeling the Christmas spirit, and our thoughts are directed not only at giving, but also creating, or should I say facilitating, miracles, particularly for those who need it most. And couldn't we all do with a little more money? With this in mind, NCB is gearing up to bring holiday chairs to SME owners this Christmas. So among all the goodies in the sack this holiday is a special sweet deal loan and cash secured loans for SMEs. Now small business owners can access the additional funds they need to restock or retool in preparation for the holiday seasons. Globally, SMEs total account for 90% of all businesses and therefore their importance cannot be overemphasized. That is why NCB is committed towards developing any eco ecosystem designs for enabling small businesses. Without further ado, I want to firstly congratulate all the new members for the private sector organization of Jamaica. And we are going to be handing out the certificates. We have our president who will be handing the certificates to our new members. So first, let's welcome C8 Media Solutions. C8 Media Solutions representatives. 
Give them a round of applause. C8 Media Solutions Limited is a full service uh, creative agency that fulfills your company's branding and marketing needs from strategy to execution. Chris Samuels, the company's CEO and creative strategist, saw room to provide creative solutions for marketing challenges using a unique formula. Mr. Samuels created a vision for C8 Media Solutions, hence the agency seeks to bridge the gap between marketing and advertising in the local landscape. Through direct contact with the creative team, clients are offered distinct competitive advantage. So thank you very much, C8 Media Solutions. So let's move to Jamaica Gasoline Retailers Association. Jamaica Gasoline Retailers Association was established in 1951 and in July 1953 was registered as a trade union. Today, they serve the interest of over 85% of the petroleum dealers in the trade. The association has been living up to one of its objectives, namely that of protecting the general interest of its members and providing benefits that would otherwise be unattainable. Thank you very much and congratulations. Let's move to the representatives for Paramount Trading. Paramount Trading, great. So Paramount Trading Jamaica Limited began its operation in Kingston on February 21st, 1991 as a manufacturer's representative and commission agent. The company was founded by managing director Hugh Graham with the support of director Daryl Fong Kong and Richard Rogers. On December 31st, 2012, Paramount Trading became a publicly listed company on the Jamaica, the junior market of the Jamaica Stock Exchange. They specialize in, but are not limited to raw material, chemical distribution, stamina trucking, and transport haulage services. Professor Sir Hilary Beckles is the Vice Chancellor of the University of the West Indies. Before assuming this office on May 1st, 2015, he served the university as pro vice chancellor and principal of its Cave Hill campus in Barbados for 13 years. He has had a distinguished career within the university, becoming at age 36 its youngest scholar to be promoted to a personal chair. As professor of economic and social history, he won the first vice chancellor's award for excellence in the field of research. He is distinguished university administrator, internationally reputed historian, an expert thinker, and strategist in higher education. Sir Hillary has had global recognition for his academic achievements and leadership. He serves on many United Nations committees and advisory panels. He is a founding member of the Secretary General Ban Ki Moon Science Advisory Board on Sustainable Development and has been an advisor to the UNESCO's Cities for Peace Global Program. And finally, Sir Hillary is an accomplished <laughs> playwright with six of his stage works receiving popular acclaim. Sir Hillary Beckles. But let us talk a little bit about the concept of this undeveloped link in Caribbean economic development. What gives me the legitimacy to speak about this subject? Well, at the age of 17, I went off to college, university, uh, to study philosophy. That was my preference. And the reason I went to do philosophy was because of what had happened in my household. I am the product of a working class Barbados family that had migrated to England in search of work. And my father worked in the industrial factories. My mother worked as a maid. But there were seven children. And my old man was of the view that he had seven very bright children. And this is what he said. He said, um, we were having a Christmas thing and he said, he looked at his children and he said, um, I have enough brain power around this table to build a rocket and go to the moon. <laughs> because he felt that all of his kids were super smart. 
He said, but there's only one problem. If you guys are going to build a rocket to the moon, I'm sorry I don't have any cash to give you gas money. <laughs> and so I thought, well, okay. I became philosophical and became philosophical and decided, well, since you have to be philosophical, why not study philosophy? And that's what I went to do, to study philosophy. But within the first four weeks of my first semester, as I began to examine the world, I realized that I, I was in the wrong place. And I went, I went scouting through the university records looking for a degree program that would help me to understand the poverty in the black world, the Caribbean, Africa, Latin America. What was going on to explain this extraordinary disparity in wealth and economic development? And the program I found, or the only program available, was economic history. And that was a program that focused precisely on this question. Why do some countries develop and not others? Why did Britain become the first industrial nation in Europe? Why not France or Germany? Why did Japan become the first industrial nation in Asia? Why not China or India? Why is the Caribbean sagging in terms of its post-independence development? That was a program I chose to study because I was fascinated with the business of economic development. And so economic growth and economic development became my discipline. We built, 20 years ago, business schools on all of our campuses. And the reason we built those business schools on each campus, and those business schools have all grown and developed and have provided management training we built those business schools as proof of our commitment to wealth creation and to wealth management. That was phase one. We are now into phase two, which is technology application, research application, product design, commercialization of knowledge, and the university sector as a strategic partner in wealth creation. And we have to do this together. And so, Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, I believe that this is a critical moment in time. I believe this is our moment. I believe that the university has been preparing itself to take this step. And I believe that we, we are ready. And with, with your invitation, with, with your patronage, I believe that we can find the synergies to deal with this anemic growth that is holding back this region. We have a tremendous amount of intellectual firepower in this region. And I do not believe, I do not believe that it is a shortage of capital that's holding back this region. I do not believe that. I would just like to say, us at the PSAJ are going to take the mandate very seriously. And we would like to reach a handout to yourselves, Professor Williams, Professor Web Weber, because I think it's incredibly important that research integrates with innovation and product, and the two have to work together. Otherwise, we're not going to grow. We're not going to have sustainable growth. We can have rain that comes down and shoots grow, but we're not going to have sustainable development and growth, and that's what we absolutely need. So, Professor, we give you our commitment that we will put together a committee or whatever we deem fit. Together we will work on what we feel fit to try and integrate ideas, identify industries that could benefit and put it together with the University of the West Indies. It may be our role that we need to drag the private sector to this, because quite often we're not fully aware of the capacity and capability of innovation. But we give you our commitment that we will work assiduously in that direction. So thank you. I would really like to thank you personally and on behalf of the PSOJ and the audience as well. I know Mina did that earlier, but um, it's not often we get the opportunity 
to listen to someone who has such great history and such experience. Um, I'm truly a believer in economic history. I think a lot of economics and well, economic analysis gets completely lost when not put in the context against the history. And one of the things that we're always in danger of is getting too technical on the economics because one of the issues is it assumes rationality. And unfortunately, I heard a saying the other day, emotion doesn't run through irrational channels. And that's how economies work. That's the reality. You know, you can have fantastic economic, technical situation developing and converging, but it takes time for people to gain the confidence because memory is there. And memory is, creates emotion, and emotion has to be evaporated before you can really take those true technical economic steps and be that rational individual. And Jamaica, I think, we're sort of in that position. We have what I believe is a document here, is a tremendous document. And we have Maureen here in the audience, and I'd like to congratulate you and your team on the hard work that you put together for this. And I don't think I'm ever going to be tired of congratulating you, because in this document are eight initiatives that are common sense initiatives. And a week ago, the UE through the Mona Business School had a conference here, and they were talking about connecting the dots. What is needed to connect the dots? And I think the most important thing is implementation. That is what's needed. But Sir Hillary touched on it. To implement, you need people. And we need capacity. And the university is the producer of those people. We, not just, we don't need to just develop them. We need to create a society that we keep them. That they see Jamaica as a place to stay, work, grow, and prosper. So the role of the university is absolutely integral to that. And we will work alongside Professor Williams and Professor Weber to integrate yourselves into the private sector. Development and in innovation, and most importantly, I believe people, are integral to, to growth. And if we don't embrace that, we just are not going to reach our objectives. And not reaching our objectives is definitely not part of the plan. So. Everybody, thank you very much. I hope you really enjoyed your breakfast this morning as much as I did. And I wish you a very great day. Have a good day.